The Apostle Paul is the author of the Epistle to the Romans. In chapter 1, at verses 15 through 17, this inspired Apostle wrote, So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein is revealed the righteousness of God from faith to faith, as it is written, The just shall live by faith. No longer would humanity be under a law of works, but now they would be under a law of faith. And the Apostle says that God's righteousness would be revealed through the gospel. Paul declares that the gospel is God's power to save. The gospel has the power to save everyone that believeth, from the Jew even unto the Gentile. The gospel is the mighty power which converts the hearts of humanity, that those hearts might turn away from sin and turn unto God. For within the gospel of Jesus Christ is revealed God's plan of righteousness so that man can become righteous. There is no other power by which humanity can be saved other than the hearing of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This gospel which saves the souls of those that are lost is made known by preaching. Preaching to many may seem foolish. In fact, when Paul wrote to the church at Corinth in chapter 1, he said it was by the foolishness of preaching that God made known the gospel. God has chosen preaching to reveal His truth, His eternal plan of human redemption. It is through preaching that God wants the gospel proclaimed so that His righteousness can be revealed. God has chosen what many consider to be foolish and non-essential by which the world is to be saved. In Mark chapter 16 at verses 15 and 16, Jesus Christ, as he, just prior to His ascension back to His heavenly Father, commissioned and charged His disciples, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The last charge that Jesus gave His disciples was that they might go into all the world and preach the gospel. He wanted them to go into all the world because He wanted all to hear the gospel. He wanted all to have the opportunity to be saved. He wanted all to come unto a saving knowledge of the truth of God. In Titus 1 and verse 3, as the apostle wrote to the young evangelist Titus, he said, But now in these last days his word has been manifested by preaching. The word of God is revealed by preaching. In 1 Timothy 2 and verse 7, Paul said of his own self, Whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle, yea, verily, a teacher of the Gentiles. One who preaches, teaches the gospel. The message which preachers are to proclaim is the gospel. Preachers are not to preach creeds, nor manuals, nor disciplines, but rather preachers are to proclaim the gospel. The gospel is found within the Word of God. And preachers are under a divine authority to proclaim only the gospel. That which any should desire to hear should be the gospel. For by the gospel one can be saved. In 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 2, the Apostle Paul told the young preacher Timothy, Preach the word. 
Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. That which Timothy was to preach was the Word. He was to go forth proclaiming to humanity the Word of God. The Word of God is found in the book that we call the Bible. This book is inspired of God. It has been revealed by the very mind of God. And we go forth and preach the gospel, which is the Word of Almighty God. This gospel has the power to save, the power to convict, the power to convert. In, even in the Old Testament, the gospel was proclaimed by preaching. 2 Peter 2 and verse 5 says that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. Noah, Noah lived in a time of great corruption. The whole earth was corrupt with the exception of Noah and his wife, his three sons and their wives. During the time that the ark was being prepared by Noah, Noah preached righteousness. He sought to change and convert the hearts of those who lived in that evil and corrupt time. So it is in our day and culture. We preach the gospel so that men can be turned from the evil and the corruption that is in the world and to which many give their attention and allow lust and sin to invade their hearts and lives so that they are turned away from God. The gospel is proclaimed so that one can be turned unto God and His righteousness. In Acts 14 and verse 7, when Paul and his associates came into Derby, Derby and Lister, the scripture says, and there they preached the gospel. As Paul traveled from place to place in his journeys, he preached the gospel. He did not preach personal judgment. He did not preach personal opinion. He did not preach personal interpretation. But rather he preached the gospel. In Romans the 10th chapter and the 14th verse, the question is asked by this same apostle who wrote this Roman letter. He said, How shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in Him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? The gospel is preached by a preacher. The gospel is heard. The gospel is believed. And when one believes, he calls upon the name of the Lord. The gospel, in order to save, must be received. The gospel must be heard, and the gospel must be believed. One must accept the gospel into his heart in order to be saved. It is not enough for one simply to hear the gospel, to listen to the message of salvation, but that message must be received, it must be believed, it must be obeyed. In Mark 16, 15 and 16, Jesus said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be condemned. Here Jesus says that the gospel as it is preached must be believed, meaning that it must be obeyed, it must be received into the life. And one must show that belief by being baptized. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. In Acts the 16th chapter at verses 14 and 15, the Apostle Paul has come into Philippi. A call has gone forth. Come over into Macedonia and help us. And so Paul makes that journey over into the region of Macedonia. And there he encounters a woman by the name of Lydia. The Bible says that Lydia had gone down to the seaside and Paul went there as she worshipped to preach the gospel unto her. 
The Bible says she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized, Lydia had gone to worship God, but she was not saved. The Apostle Paul preached unto her the gospel, the word of God. She attended unto those things. She listened to those words that Paul spoke. She listened to the message of the gospel. And then she received the gospel into her heart, for she was baptized into Jesus Christ. In that same 16th chapter of Acts, at verse 30 through verse 33, Paul has been placed into the prison at Philippi. And at midnight, he and Silas are singing psalms. They're singing hymns. They're praising God. Even in this prison, they still are in a mood of happiness, a manner of rejoicing, singing praise unto God. A mighty earthquake shakes that prison. And the jailer is fearful that these men have escaped and he is about to take his own life. Paul says, Do thyself no harm. And so in verse 30, as this jailer brings Paul and Silas from the prison, he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? He has asked this question about his own personal salvation. Salvation is a personal matter. But notice that one must do in order to be saved. What must I do? What must? There are no options in the matter of salvation, there is the word must, I do. And Paul says, or the record says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized, he and all his. This man asked the question, what must I do to be saved? He was instructed to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He was taught more fully the word of the Lord and he was baptized. The gospel in order to save, the gospel that has the power to save, must be preached but it must be received by the human heart. In Acts 18 and verse 8, many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized. They believed what they heard. They received what they believed by being baptized. The word of the Lord is preached. The word of the Lord is believed. The word of the Lord is received into the human heart so that one is saved. In the book of 1 Thessalonians, at chapter 1, verses 5 and 6, the Apostle Paul writes to this church of the Thessalonians, which he says is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. The church is in God the Father. The church is in the Lord Jesus Christ. One must be in God and one must be in the Father in order to be in the church. When one receives the gospel of Jesus Christ through obedience, by faith, repentance, confession, and baptism, he is placed into the church, the body of the saved. In verses 5 and 6, Paul says, For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance. And ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. The Apostle Paul says, The gospel came unto you in word, in power, and in the Holy Ghost. The gospel is a message of power. And ye became followers of us, having received the word in much affliction. The word which came unto them was the word which was received by them. In chapter 2 and verse 13 of this same letter, 
The Apostle says, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. This passage says that they received the word of God which they heard. They did not receive it as the word of men, but rather they received it as the word of God. They believed that word. The word will effectually work in those that believe. The word will convert the heart. It will change the life and the thinking, the activity of those who believe and receive it. But what we understand from Paul's journey into Thessalonica was that he preached the gospel, the word of God. And they believed that word which he preached and they received that word. If the power of God to save is going to save, it must be believed and it must be received. This word is preached because of God's great love for humanity. God has sent this message into the world because He loves humanity and He wants humanity to be saved. He wants lost people to be saved. In John 3 and verse 16, the scripture said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. The gospel is the message of Jesus Christ. The gospel is the message of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. When the Apostle Peter preached on Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, he preached the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He explains in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that the gospel is the message of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And when this message is preached, we are to believe that message. God sent His Son and allowed His Son to die, to be buried, and to be resurrected because He loved the world. But that love of the world must cause us to believe. Everyone that believeth shall have everlasting life. But the reason we have the opportunity to believe, the privilege to believe, is because God loved the world. Had God not loved the world, Jesus Christ would not have come into the world, and therefore we could not and would not be saved. In Romans 5 and verse 8, where the Apostle Paul is talking about the atonement that is found in Christ Jesus, the reconciliation of man to God. The reason we need to be reconciled is because we have become alienated from God because of sin. Sin separates the heart of humanity from the heart of God. Sin tears us away from God. And as Paul discusses this message of reconciliation, this atonement that is found through Jesus Christ, he said, God commended His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus died for us not because we were righteous, not because we were holy, not because we were the servants of God and desired to go to heaven and were living in a manner so that we could go to heaven, but while we were sinners and God commended His love toward us. In Ephesians 2 at verses 4 and 5, Paul says, But God, who is rich in mercy for His great love, even when we were alienated and sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died when we were alienated from Him, when we were sinners, when we were His enemies, and His great love, the amazing love of Almighty God, was manifested. 
Would we reject the love of God to remain in sin, to remain alienated and separated from Him? Would we reject the love of God so that we might continue to be the enemies of God? No person can love as God has loved. No person has made the sacrifice that God has made in the giving of His Son. No person has such an understanding and such a depth of love as God has for humanity. And that love has been manifested, it has been commended unto us through the death of Jesus Christ. In 1 John 4 at verses 9 and 10, the Apostle of Love writes, In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Jesus Christ became the sacrifice for our sins. He was the offering, the penalty for our sins. God's righteousness, as Paul presents in the Gospel of Jesus Christ, Romans 1, 15 through 17, was the plan that sinful man could become righteous. And that righteousness was manifested through the preaching of the Gospel because of the tremendous, overwhelming unfathomable love of Almighty God for lost humanity. God's love was manifested when His only begotten Son was sent into the world. But the gospel is preached because of God's desire for all to be saved. Jesus said, go into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. God wants all to be saved. Not simply a few, but all. In 2 Peter 3 and verse 9, Peter discusses the end of time. The end of time is unknown to the mind of man. God has not revealed in His Word when time will end, when the world will be destroyed. There have been guesses made as to when the world will end. There have been dates set as to when the world will end. But the end of the world is known only to the mind of God and has not been revealed even to the Lord Jesus Christ, His Son. But Peter discusses the events that will transpire at the end of the world. And he says that he is delaying the coming of Christ and the end of time because he has no desire for any to be lost, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The heart of God is saddened when men linger in sin, when hearts remain in disobedience, when people are alienated from Him. In Ezekiel 18 and verse 23, God asked Judah through that Old Testament prophet, Have I any pleasure at all in the death of the wicked, and not that he should return from his ways and live? God will take no pleasure in the death of the wicked. The wicked choose to die. The wicked choose to live in separation to God. Wherever you and I are in our place in the world today and in our relation to God and the Lord Jesus Christ is our own personal choice. Because God has done all that God can do for man to be saved. He has devised a plan by which lost people can be saved. That plan has been presented through faithful gospel preaching. That plan is revealed in His Word where any and all can study and come to an understanding of this divine plan. 
God has made every provision so that the wicked shall not perish, but that they should return from their ways and live. In 1 Timothy 2 and verse 4, the Apostle Paul wrote concerning God that he wants all to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. To be saved, we must come unto a knowledge of of the truth. There is God's truth and there is man's truth. There is God's plan and there is man's plan. And God wants us to come unto the knowledge of His plan, the knowledge of the truth. You remember Jesus said in John 8, 32, Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. We're made free from sin free from the guilt of sin, free from the penalty of sin, as we come to a knowledge of the truth. When we hear the gospel preached, we must believe the gospel. We must receive the gospel so that that power can save us. The gospel is preached so that sinful humanity can be saved. It is God's power to cleanse, God's power to restore, God's power to plant the burning desire of everlasting life in heaven with Him and with His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive that gospel through obedience by faith, repentance, confession, and baptism. And one knows the power of the gospel to save and convert. We offer that invitation to come and follow Christ as we stand and sing this hymn.